Uh, good morning, all. Can I be heard? You can. Thank you. I stand by. <clears throat> I discovered something about my new hearing aids today. That they start acting funny when they're getting low and even before they go out. And I was having trouble with my Bluetooth hearing aid connection. I have not gotten a warning to change batteries. So I hadn't. And so I proceeded to change batteries and everything works fine now. What kind of That's working what kind of working funny are you talking about? Uh, difficulty connecting Bluetooth to my computer and uh, unreliable uh, Bluetooth connection. <coughs> the audible qualities are were just fine, but it was the Bluetooth connection to the phone and, and computer that was uh, getting spotty. Sometimes on um, you know connections like that, there's uh, something where they'll tell you the signal level of something, and it can vary by by a lot of things, including what other things are you know using Bluetooth uh, near you. And the, however, yeah, the, the the stronger the batteries, the stronger the the, the amplification you can get. Right. Another peculiarity I've had recently, last day or two, is my phone, what it's displaying, whether it's very light information, intense, or dark or something, it's affecting the volume of my Bluetooth. Uh, even though I wasn't using the Bluetooth connection between the phone and the, the uh, hearing aid. So that it was really sort of spooky, and I haven't I I haven't tested that yet, but I presume that uh, peculiarity has gone away also. Um, yeah, again, when things are, you know, when the power is getting low, things are operating at the edge. They they'll be affected by all sorts of things that they normally they're strong enough to ignore. Yeah. I was watching a video one uh, recently that describes how electricity actually travels. It doesn't go by electrons per se. It goes by the electromagnetic waves that are around the wires. Well, Not completely clear to me how it works, but uh, I was surprised that it didn't do it strictly through electrons, which I've always believed to be true. Well, yeah, they're, they're, you know, electrons will move in response to a voltage. But a, a an AC thing, a, a wave, it's just like a wave in an ocean. The molecules of the water don't move except for going pretty much around. The wave travels through it. The, the, mo the molecules do this, but the wave travels through. So yeah. it's sort of the same thing with the um, electrons and uh, a an AC uh, energy signal. But even that would be analogous to sound too, which is a wave motion and one molecule bouncing off another molecule and so on down the line. Yeah, but the, the, the air molecules don't have to move. They just vibrate back and forth. The sound travels yeah. through them. I'm astounded by the fact that I can hear a siren that's going off down probably in close to the city, maybe several miles away. It has to come through the air, has to come through the glass windows, has to hit my eardrum. And for me to hear it, that is amazing. Uh, <laughs> just hard to believe that's true. In many ways, uh, you know, uh, nature has designed us so that uh, we can hear that lion rustling in the in the in the weeds. Yeah, yeah. But even even then, when it gets to the eardrum, then it has to go through a lot of processes, bouncing around, have, moving bones, etc., till it finally gets to where it's uh, making a ripple in the in the liquid in your ear that that yeah. in itself it's is soft. amazing yeah. and, and and then the, the little hairs in your ear that have uh, hairs of different lengths for different uh, frequencies and that's yeah. how you can uh, and basically it's the, it's the little wiggling of those ears that actually get it into the 
chemical yeah. pathways of your uh, auditory system. Yeah, it is amazing. What's really amazing in that process is the brain. Yeah. That takes whatever stimulus it gets and turns it into uh, something that tells you that somebody else is talking to you or a siren is going off or yeah. whatever yeah. else. Yeah. The, the pattern recognition stuff, which is what some of the AI things are getting fairly good at. Uh, we have this, you know, few pounds of, uh, of gray matter has been evolutionarily working on that for billions of years. The brain must have a fantastic repair mechanism too, because it seems like uh, your interpretation of these signals stays the same over your lifetime for almost everybody. And it would seem to me that there would be some severe degradation over your lifetime, but it doesn't seem to happen. So, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, I, until you get Alzheimer's. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think much of that is because there's these reinforcing feedback loops that uh, keep things sort of refreshed a little bit. Whereas yeah, that, that's where I think you get the, you know, use it or lose it type of uh, mentality of, if you, you have to keep doing something, you'll be able to keep doing it pretty effectively. If you haven't done it for 30 years, you're gonna be a bit of a mess. Pat, let me remind you, I do have a copy of Malware Bytes for you for nine bucks. If you still want it, uh, shoot me an email. I just dropped my uh, Malware Bytes. Uh, they were asking for a renewal. And uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm tr trying to pare down on my subscription things. Will, I think I got it from you, though. I haven't done it yet, but I, that's my goal. This yeah, weekend. you have it, and uh, David okay. has two copies, and there's one left. So, okay. Pat, if you don't want it, uh, maybe Stan will take it uh, for $9. Is that, is that a one-time charge, or is that a subscription? It's a one-year oh. subscription. One-year subscription. Normally, and I had to, I couldn't just renew it. it apparently, I, I had to, I think your idea was better. I, you know, down, get rid of it and reinstall it. And that, and that's what I did because if you uh, if you want to renew it, then you're basically you know renewing that old license key or something. Yeah, right. But I was yeah, and Will, you, you got the um, PayPal payment I sent over to you? Um, I haven't looked. I'm sure not, I probably do. Not my fault then. No. <laughs> Oh, Jim, you're back from your worldwide trip. Uh, yes, I am. It uh, was wonderful. I get we'll, back uh, at the end of December. We'll need a, a uh, report from you. Well, I'll, try, I'll try to stick a few background pictures up once in a while once I get them downloaded. Where'd you go, Jim? Uh, I left out of Sydney and went to Australia with a number of stops on the islands between. Hmm. That was a forty-two day cruise. Oh, that, oh, that was a yeah. You, know, you cruised to uh, Australia. Yes, and then wow. I spent uh, a week in Sydney, and then I took another cruise around, circumnavigated New Zealand. Oh, how uh, fun! Back to Sydney again, and then went to a few cities in Australia. So I was there about a month. Okay. Well, yeah, that well, sounds... great trip. It sounds like my, you know, Australia, New Zealand trip that I did in October. And, uh, uh, yeah, Australia is a really big place. New Zealand is more manageable. Uh, it's it's very pretty. It's it's also pretty small. I think, like, there's more people in San Diego County than there are in New Zealand. If you left in October, we might have been down there around the same time. I left on October 2nd. 
to hmm. begin the cruise. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I had first two weeks in Australia, and my second two weeks were in New Zealand. Very nice. Yeah. What cruise line was it, uh, Jim? I went on Holland America, and I yeah. highly recommend them. Yeah, I, I took Australia on Holland America. That was great. And then I went on uh, Celebrity, and I would not recommend Celebrity. <laughs> and and Holland America sails out of San Diego some parts of the year. Yes, mm -hmm. it does. I've taken a couple of those, and they're great. I'm considering living on a ship for a year. I, can do <laughs> I it, consider that. Too. I can do it for almost the same price as staying home. That's true. <laughs> yeah. uh, although you, you, your home is still here and you still have to pay a lot of uh, taxes and other things, even whether you're living in it or not. Not if you rent it out. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and ooh, when the dishwasher overflows, how are you going to come and fix it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, working, I'm still working that. on my toilet since I got back. <laughs> Looks like we're up to 15 so far. Yep. And it is uh, 34 minutes after the hour. Let's see. We're missing Dan. Who is it that usually asks me to, to start the chat or start the uh, that would be Dan, but I already did it. Oh, good for you. So uh, Zoom okay. has made it easier. Anybody can request it now, and it does. It's not up to the host. <laughs> but I don't see the uh, the live stream at the bottom of the screen. You would either have to click on the show captions button on the Zoom control bar to see the closed caption bubble, or use the up arrow to get to the full transcript pane if that's what you're looking for. Hmm. It, it doesn't do it for everybody. It just does it for the individual who wants to see the closed captioning or the full transcript, much oh, like really? the chat pane. Just just like the chat pane. If you if you want to see the chat pane, you open it up. If you don't, you close it. And what I noticed that's new on mine is that you get to see who's speaking with the little icon. Um. You mean in the full transcript window or in, in the, the closed caption bubble? In the closed caption bubble. Yeah, I see the little um, avatars, if you will, <laughs> next to it. Um, yeah, that is new. I hadn't noticed that before. Good point. Well, David, if you're ready, we're stuck at 16 participants, and it is uh, 36 minutes after, so I think I will ask you if you're ready to start. I will mute everybody, and you can unmute yourself, David. Okay, and as long as I can share, that should work just fine. You should be able to. Mm -hmm. Let me just see. Yep. Participants can share, chat, unmute themselves. <laughs> okay, let's see. There, everyone is muted except me. Go, David. Unmute yourself and go, David. All right. So we're going to have a talk today about how to take all those numbers we've been looking at in Excel and make them into pretty pictures. So I've found, uh, you know, a pretty nice video. It's from a a guy that runs a, a, a channel called Teachers Tech. So I'm going to uh, see if I can get this shared and show this to you, and then we'll, we'll stop that, take a few questions. I also have another uh, little sort of, you know, in-person demo of uh, how to do things taken from some of the students I help with some of their chemistry stuff. So let's get started. I'm going to see if I can share.
Okay, people should see the video with the teacher's tech guy there. Everyone, every, we just yes, see it. Yes. All right, let's let's go. Hi there, Jamie here today at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great day today. Today, I want to show you how you can quickly and simply create charts and graphs inside Microsoft Excel and how you can customize it to get just the look you're looking for to show your data. If you'd like to follow along with the same data that I'm using, I'll put a link to this down below in the description. And when you click on it, you can just go ahead, go to file, and then just go copy or download a copy. And then you're going to have that copy to use in Excel. So what I'm going to do in today's tutorial on graphing and charting is just recreate this chart that I have right here of the 2021 revenue between TikTok and YouTube. And you can see in the data up here that I do have Disney and Netflix, but I just don't have it in. But you can go ahead and add uh, those series in also, and I'll show you how you can do that. Now, I'm just going to go to sheet two where I have the exact same information. So you can always check back uh, on sheet one of their practice file two uh, to see what the chart looks like. Now, with this one, I just want to show you the, a quick way you can add a chart, and that's what I'm going to start with. And I'm going to show you three different ways. So I could select an area that I want to add uh, a chart to. So if I select Netflix here and just highlight the four quarters here, I can quickly add it with a shortcut. So if I go ahead and hit Alt F1, it quickly puts in the chart. Notice when I get the move handle, I can move the chart all, all around. Now there'd be more customization I need to do to this still, uh, but I'll get into that a little bit later. So I'm just gonna hit delete. I had that selected and I, I'm gonna hit delete. Now I could also, and I tend to do this. So if I was gonna create it on Netflix, I go to the insert and you can see there's recommended charts. There's all these different charts, but a lot of times I'll click on recommended and at this point, I get some ideas of what one, maybe I want a line graph or this clustered bar, or uh, you can see the different ones. So if I choose this one, I can just hit OK. And now I have this, uh, this chart in just like this. And I could go through and start customization. I'm going to delete that, this one one more time. I'm going to show you one more way you can do it. Even if you're not uh, selected in the data range here, if I was just going to go insert and you can still go to your recommended charts here. If I just, let's say, pick this pie graph here and 3D pie graph. Now there's nothing here, but at this point, what I could do is go ahead and select my data. So you can see that there's different series that I could add uh, and then there's the horizontal uh, categories that I could add. So at this point, if I was gonna uh, go ahead and do Netflix, I could go, uh, what's the series, na series name? I could go click on Netflix, then I could click on this and I could just go through and then hit enter like so and i have the graph in and i can still do some customization customization of this because i might not want this to be one two three four i could go to quarters and highlight these right here and you can see the cues are there now and just like that i've done some customization so different ways that i can add charts so let's go ahead and i'm going to start with gathering uh, information about youtube uh, to put in a chart just before I grab the information on YouTube here, I want to point out a little tip here. So let's say if I wanted to select uh, maybe these different streaming uh, video services here and highlight them, if I wanted to just do the total revenue over here, if you hold control down on your computer, you can select both and then you'd be able to make your graph from there. So if you were doing your shortcut again, if I do the Alt F1, I can quickly put the graph in based on, uh, based on that information. So I just want to point it out, you can use holding down control to select different areas of the data on it. Another thing I want to point out is that you can select multiple rows at once with it. So if I was selecting everything here and picking all four quarters and then went up to insert my graph. I just so want to check, it, was that flickering for people? I saw it flickering on my screen. A little bit. Okay. Let me... By the way, everyone, this whole recording is on the website now under events.
if I was just going to do a simple one like this, you can see that it selected everything in there. And then I can go ahead and make any customization from there. When I start with YouTube here, I'm just going to start with one at a time and show you how you can add uh, to your graphs. All right, let's go to YouTube now. So this is the first information that I want to pull in. So I'm just going to highlight this right through here and I'm going to go to my insert and I know I'm actually going to want a uh, bar graph here so you could I could choose and I can change these after notice as I hover over any of these it shows me what I want but you can change this you can always change your graph nothing set uh, I'm just going to select this just like this and move this over when I have the graph selected here, you can see that it shows what it's representing in the data, what's highlighted right here. Uh, what I want to point out first is here is what you get on this side. Uh, now this uh, plus here, if I go ahead and click on it, uh, this shows me all the different chart elements. And right now I have, uh, you can see the axis is selected on and then I can go to the arrow and I can unclick and click. You can see how it changes if you don't want those on there. Uh, if I want access titles, and I am gonna want access titles on here because I wanna make sure, I'm just gonna put in billions of dollars here. And is there any other, do I want the data labels in there? If I do, I can select it. At any time, you can turn them on or off. Again, if I hover over, even without selecting, gives me that preview of everything on here. So the legend, and if I go over to the uh, uh, the right a little bit more, you can see where I can place it. If I hover over where you, what I'm gonna do now is just go through and click. If I click in any of the spots here, so it says where it says access title, I can go ahead and put in billions of dollars. So even if I, I just put my dollar sign and I'll just put billions like so, and I can go ahead and name my other uh, access title here if this is going to be quarters, depending if you want this or not. If you don't want it, you can go ahead and just select it. Notice how I'm on the outside of it, the handle. So if I select off of it again, and then I select it again, and I just hit delete. Yeah. It was way, but I still have that. Well, it looks like I have a little error in here. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this before we move on to the next part. So if you wanted to go ahead and add the access title back again, if I select on this, uh, I can go back and if you take a look at access titles, if I select it off, then select it on again, it puts it back. It does reset this. So then at this point, you can go ahead and type the uh, information that you want back in here. So if I put quarters here, and this was just gonna be in billions here. So I'll just put the, uh, dollar sign here like so and put billions all right so we have it labeled and we have uh, a title up here and we have our legend now we can do this uh, in a quicker way too uh, that does kind of the same thing if we look up at the top here when I have this selected I want to point out so when I select this chart I get these two tabs up here right here we have chart design and format there's many different ways that we can uh, go ahead and make uh, changes to our chart so we have chart design here even if I right click on different objects of it uh, we can notice how I can change the series type select the data right from here if I select a different part of it it changes again what I have so in right clicking you're going to see a lot of things now when I'm under chart design and I have this selected I have the chart elements right here so I showed you through down here when we're turning them on and off we do have it right through here where we can go through and pick so you'll see as I hover over it changes uh, the chart so if I just move it over slightly so you can see it you, it gives you an idea of how everything's moving on it uh, then we have our quick layout. So the quick layout, as I hover over again, you can see how you get that quick view on it. So I'm not selecting any, I'm just selecting off of it and just stays with what I have. So if I uh, want to, I just want to point out now that uh, with any of these here, you can start making some changes to the font by using uh, the home tab too. So if I wanted to change these with bold, and again, there's a few different
different ways you can do uh, all these different things. But if I use the home, notice if I hit bold, it bolds. I can change the size of my font if I wanted it larger here. I can select all these and do different things here. So I can go through, change my font. I can change my font color uh, very quickly just by going back to any of these. So uh, I'm going to change my title on this one. So this is going to be 2021 revenue. So I'm just going to put in 2021 revenue just like that by clicking in. And any of these objects too, you can move if you just select inside and grab your handles. Notice I can grab the chart titles and start moving around any of these things I can move around uh, inside the chart so now I'm going to go ahead and add TikTok as part of a series in here. So I'll have the two different ones. Uh, and I want to point out, yes, I could have highlighted both of them to start with, but I just wanted to show you how you can add more series as you go along or change any of them too. Uh, so if I just have this selected again, uh, I'm going to go ahead and select this right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to select data and I'm going to hit select data. And at this point, I get this data source here. So I'm going to add another one. So you can see YouTube's already there. And actually, I'm going to make a quick change here because I don't want it to one, two, three, four. So if I hit edit, this was going to be the quarters that I used before. And now I have the quarters updated here. Uh, now, so I'm going to go ahead and add TikTok. So what was the series name here? Well, this is TikTok. I could go ahead and choose if I was going to do Netflix or Disney or add even more. I could go ahead and do that. What's the series value? So if I select this one, uh, I could type it in, but I'm going to highlight the uh, different ones, the different quarters that I want. So I could go ahead, hit enter or select this and hit OK. And now I have, uh, you can see kind of what is happening there. I'm going to go and just make sure that this is the same. I don't think it will matter on this one because I already have my access set here. Hit OK. All right, so it's not quite the uh, chart that I have in the demo one here. So if you look at it, I have it placed a little different. Now, how you can quickly change this. So if I go and I have it selected and I go up to chart design here, I'm going to drop down and as I hover over different ones, you can see that there's different looks here. So if I go through uh, different ones, I can't find it quite yet. So the one that I used before, so if I'm going to go back to insert here and I'm going to do a drop down here and I know I have it kind of in uh, this one right here where it's behind each other. So I'm going to select that one. And now right away, you notice a little bit of an issue. Well, TikTok's the smaller one there. And I don't want, uh, I don't want this to be uh, the YouTube in front because it kind of blocks it out, but I can change the order there. So if I go back to the, this where the data here, the values, and I'm going to go and select data again. At this point, you can see YouTube and TikTok are here. I'm going to move up TikTok to the top. So if I go and just move it up like this, you can see the switch. Now this is going to be a lot more visible like this. So that's making some change. And if you wanted to make some other changes, remember in your chart design uh, how you can quickly hover over any of these to get if you wanted uh, any of these here. But anything you choose, you can customize it after too. All right, so let's do a couple more things here to this. And what I want to do is change the color here. I do want to point out anytime you double click on any of these. So even if I was going to double click on quarters, notice that I have format access title open up. And this is where I can be adding, uh, I can be changing things from, you know, a solid line. And so when I click solid line, that went around the quarters here. So I'm just going to undo that with control Z. So this is, you can do some more format of the access title of what I selected. So if I go and select this right here, uh, you can see now I can go here and start formatting. Do I want a different color? So this is where I, uh, if I wanted it, maybe that red color, I could select red and it changes. I do want to point out, even if I go to home, and where the fill bucket is here, I can make changes to the color of these at this point. So again, there's multiple different ways that you can do this. Uh, and I could go through and do I want to anything else changed? Do I want, uh, right now it had no line, solid line. You can kind of see as you go through and change with any of these. So maybe if I wanted it to be kind of a black line, 
around it. I can change how thick it is like this. So if I wanted to stand out like this. Now I can go ahead and click on the other one here, the other series here, and I have this selected. You can see it's TikTok. I could go and change it to maybe I want it to be gray like this. And I'm gonna do, uh, this is the line here. And so I'm gonna go and make this a little thicker here. And so it just stands out. So I have uh, my gray, uh, maybe I could go back. If I want to change it more, I could select it. And if I go back up to my color here, I could maybe make it a little bit darker like this. So now I've made a few more changes to the color. I, other things that you can do, which if you don't want these columns like this, if I go ahead and select this, Take a look at this over here. If I go to uh, the, this, I could go to full pyramid. I could go to partial pyramid. You can see how you can quickly change any of these. I'm gonna leave it at the box here. I do wanna point that out. And then we have series option of gap, uh, the depth and everything. As I make a few changes, you can see how things are uh, being modified in here as I move it. So again, I'm just hitting control Z on a few of these. I think each was at 150% like so to put it back to what I had. So at any of these, you can go ahead, anything you double click on, you can go and change it through the format access title, anything here if it's clicked on you can make changes in many different ways so i just want to point out uh, those different changes to get the, getting the chart to look what you want it to look like if you do want to add another series to this click on the graph again go back to your data select the data and this time maybe you want to have disney here so if i go ahead and i can hit add again so what's my series name here's disney What's my value is gonna be? It's gonna be this right to here. I'm just gonna hit enter, hit okay. And I can change the order again. So depending on where, where it works best. So if I move it up, uh, do I want it to be in the front or the back? You can see kind of the preview down here, what is happening. Then I can make through, go through and make all of those changes to the colors to make it stand out and even more. Now, another thing you could do, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and Disney's out of there. Another thing that you could do in your uh, type of uh, chart type and where I'm gonna go is just to here, change chart type. And remember, there's different ways that I can be doing this. Even if I'm right clicking change uh, chart type lots of different ones uh, so even though the data and I've created all this I could go through I can quickly change this if I wanted a different type of uh, chart that would make sense to you uh, if you want to learn more about other charts and scientific ones I have a different video of explaining uh, that one too and I'll put a link down below in the description and up above in the card uh, but uh, what I want to point out is the combo feature. You can actually have two different types of charts uh, are on it. So I like I could change one to a line. So if I wanted YouTube to be a line and I wanted TikTok to be a clustered column, I could do that. So if I hit OK, you can see how quickly it changed uh, just like that by adding the two different types. So you can do a combo. So I could Control Z and just put it back at that point. Uh, now, what can we do with this chart? So uh, I want to point out to we could add some images to this so whether or not you have them saved or maybe you have them copied uh, you could copy and paste them right from the internet so I, what I want to do is actually put a YouTube and a TikTok logo right beside it just to make the graph or the chart a little bit more interesting. So if you want to add images, you can copy paste even from the internet. I have them saved on my computer. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit illustration uh, picture and this device and I am already in the right folder. So this first one is YouTube. Well, that's really large. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink this to a size that will work a lot better here. And that's still too large. So I'll shrink this down just like that. So even if I want to be putting it next to it, and then I'm going to go get my TikTok one here. So I'm going to go insert illustration picture from this device and TikTok. And again, really large here. I'm going to shrink this down. Uh, and remember, you can inside uh, Excel, you can do more things to the picture. Uh, if, when you have the picture selected, you look under picture format, you can see the different things. I want to crop this a bit. I'm going to get the handles here. Uh, just because it's a little bit too much around the outside. So I'm just going to leave it just like this, just for an example. And now it's cropped. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit more 
and I'll move it down. Now notice that the TikTok and YouTube are very close together there. I can grab this legend and actually stretch it out so it has space like that. So now I wanna give it a little bit more room between this maybe, and I can make these a little bit bigger. Uh, I don't need these uh, here. I'm gonna go ahead, just select them, delete them, gives a little bit more room. But now it's kind of pushing into my legend a bit. If I click right around here, I can be tricky to click. You don't wanna click right in, but if I click here, notice I get the handles around everything. I can resize this. If I grab, I'm just grabbing this one here and bringing it in, and now I have more room. So I've changed that. Uh, the chart area size on it just by selecting on it. I could do this to the big handles, uh, but sometimes then they can change the proportions of it, kind of skew it a little bit. But you can get uh, change the smaller one here. I'm just going to leave it right uh, to this point. So I do want to mention again that Excel, when you're creating their charts, you can do the same thing in many different ways. So just like when I select the chart, I have the style here that I can change, but I could also change it through the chart design. So again, different ways to do it, right clicking, uh, knowing that it will get you, to the, it looks like a lot of different things, but it's the same thing over and over again. So what do you do with this uh, chart when you're all done? Well, what you can do, you could save it as a picture. So I could do this by right clicking on it. And if I look, I could save it as a picture right here. And then you could put it into a Word document or maybe a PowerPoint. I could actually copy this and paste this whole thing into a Word document or a PowerPoint also. But I have a different video on kind of the proper way of doing this because what you can do is link it in a way that if the data information changes, it will automatically update. So take a look at that video. If you are going to be putting this into Microsoft Word or into the Microsoft PowerPoint, I'll put a link also to that down below. So I hope you like this tutorial on how to create charts uh, inside uh, inside Microsoft Excel. Uh, it, once you get creating and realizing that uh, you can have a lot of fun when you're designing everything, getting the correct data into it. Let me know what else you're like, uh, wanting to learn inside Microsoft Excel. Excel or other tech. Thanks for watching this time on Teachers Tech. I'll see you next week with more tech tips and tutorials. Alrighty, so that was a whole lot. Uh, any questions at this point? David, um, if you look in the chat, Stan had a question. Okay, well, let me go. Okay, where's the there's the chat. My Excel home tab, I do not see chart design. Okay, so let's bring up Excel and in your home tab, there's no chart design. You haven't got a chart yet. So what I, you know, insert and then I'll just, Pick a chart. Now, once I've selected the chart, the chart design and format shows up. Does that help, Stan? Uh, yeah, I missed that first step of insert. Um, yeah. So basically, if I just delete that, then if I'm just sitting here in a spreadsheet, I've not got anything selected. I don't have a chart to design. I have to put a chart, then I can do its design. Stan is muted, but his lips are moving. Stanley, can we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right. I see now that I have to click on, from the home screen, click on insert and select chart and charts. And then I got, but I have to have a chart. Yeah. Okay, so that was a um, first step, but that's the type of thing that frustrate me when I try to find to do something. I miss the first step and nothing after that is apparent. Yeah. Uh, think... So thank you for that information. Well, that, that's just the kind of question that we need to, uh, yeah, get you started with because, you know, as a, it's very easy to get something that's totally frustrating uh, when you can't, when all of the things they say do, you can't do because they're not on, they're not showing up.
anyone else have any questions? Was that uh, useful for doing charts or was this stuff that you've all seen before? It was useful to me, at least. I have not done charts much. And um, the only, the one, and I know you can't, the person can't cover everything in an introductory video like that. But one thing that when you're demonstrating it next in this mm -hmm. meeting, you might address is the uh, text adjacent to the bar graphs. If that's editable in terms of format, maybe putting a background behind it to make it better contrast and things like that, uh, adjusting the text format. Um, yeah, I think he covered that a little bit. All of the elements that are in the chart, you tend to you, you click on them and the little handles will show up. Once those once that thing is selected, all of your regular things as far as formatting, sizing, you can drag those handles around to position it. Uh, and then if you want to change the background that's there, first of all, I probably try that chart style. The part. So let me just, yeah, I'll just select a little bit there. And then I'm going to, you know, this is the way I, I do it. I insert a chart like that. And now I've got my chart design. I can select on these things and get different kinds of charts. In fact, I could also go down and see there's all these different kinds of charts that you could do. And that's just, this is just a straight little line chart, but I can change the background there, or uh, you can use these things here on the, the plus sign. These are the elements that you have control of. Uh, I can change my titles, my data labels, you know, all these sorts of things and, and trend lines. That's a, a useful thing. All the things you can get up in that thing, you can also get up in the add chart element here. So as he was saying, there's usually two, sometimes three ways of getting to that. Uh, you know, I could select a data series, and then I could say add trend line from the data series. I could use the uh, plus chart elements, and I could add a trend line. I could go up to, with this thing selected, I could add chart element, and I could put a trend line on it that way. And so all these things, uh, you know, you can do. So there's several different ways of doing the same kind of thing. What I wanted to do next, unless there's any other questions. Hello, Willie. Yeah, the one thing I was going to suggest if you start, if you're embarking on this charting stuff for the first time is to get your data in, in a good order. So in good columns where you're going to, have adjacent columns that mean something because if it's all over the place if it's on different sheets or different um, areas you, you don't want to make charts out of stuff that's separated by by different rows you don't have a data rows three through, through five and another set of data seven through ten that just makes it more difficult so if you can organize your data into uh, you know uh, yeah yeah, if your data looks like a table, it, it will probably chart better. It's a lot easier to, to 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 block it out to make charts from. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, they are very good at advice, and we'll, we'll sort of see some of that in my upcoming example. But before that, Stanley, another question. Um, I, the um, when I see what was just shown, that is the chart within a tab. Um, when you go to print that chart, is it easy just to print the chart and ignore everything else? Or should you put that chart on a new tab um, and have it separate from the page where the data is? Uh, sort of depends what you want. Uh, but if you're interested in the chart by itself, uh, I might actually, as uh, the instructor said, take that cut and paste it into a Word document or some other document, and then just, you know, you can put all the rest of the text around it. And, uh, and that way it's a, uh, you can format it that way. If you print it out from an Excel spreadsheet, you're going to tend to get the, everything that's in the print area of that sheet. Uh, but you could um, limit the print area to only the graph. 
Yeah, okay, yeah, uh, again, uh, let me just do that, insert chart, and then I could go back to home. Page layout. Yeah, page layout, and then uh, where is print layout? Draw no home. Where's, Maybe not. I, yeah. It, well, yeah, it, it looks, it, it, yeah, the, the print area is here, but it's grayed out while that thing is selected. So, okay, it's not selected. Uh, print area, set the print area. Okay. But I'm, I could select that much of my sheet and say, set the print area, and then I would be printing that much of my sheet. Does that work for right, you? Th uh, thank you. Would that be easier than putting the graph on a separate page? Not, uh, you know, in some ways, you know, if I was wanting to present this, I would probably take and put it into a Word document. I see. Thank you. Well, you, you can copy and paste it onto a new sheet if, yeah. if that makes yeah. it easier. It's really simple. Also, you can copy, you can do something place, which is, right, paste like yeah. that, and then yeah. just print the sheet. Yeah, but you can also link it back. There's ways of making it link back to the original chart. So if one changes, they both change the same way. It might be linked already, but yeah, I think if, if you're updating data and it's all set sitting on a separate sheet, you kind of want it linked to the original data. Yeah, and I, I know this one's linked because when I have it selected, it highlights right. the, uh, the the columns that are there. Even on the other page, it's still linked. It should be. So how did you link them? I, 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 I go, just go to, your, go to your sheet one that you just made. Sheet one. Now that that's linked. I mean, if you look at the data, if you go to select data, it should tell you where it's from. Select data and it now it took me back over to the original sheet. Right. So it's still linked to that yeah. data, which is good. So you can always work on the the chart that's on the sheet with the data. And then when you go to print, that's automatically updated on sheet one. But yeah. even if you move it out to a Word doc, is it still linked? That's he was kind of alluding to you have to set that up a different way. But yeah, yeah you can yeah, yeah, you have to basically uh, not only tell it what sheet it's on but you also have to then tell it what Excel file it's in. And so the, the reference begins to be a much longer thing. Right. And that Excel file has to stay in the place that you put it. Otherwise, it, 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 if you tell it to look in the third drawer down and you move it to the fourth drawer, it won't find it there and you'll, yeah. your chart will go blank inside your document. Or actually, probably it'll keep the old data and it just won't update. You know, know, copy, you know, copy it as a static chart. Yeah. yeah. Charting is pretty uh, complex, but you think back to the guys that wrote the program to do the charting, that is really complex. By the way, any idea what sort of program they use to write this uh, charting program? Uh, <laughs> well, all, yeah, of, all of Excel is written in C++. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. this is Microsoft, so... What they probably have done over the years is they found there was some little company that had a chart add-on to Excel and they did a good job and they bought the little company for, yeah. you know, $500 million and <laughs> took that technology and incorporated it into there. I mean, I know they did that with math type for all of their math type setting stuff and lots of other things. So the, the code base for these Excel products is uh, uh, probably... 50 different little uh, companies' codes you know, patched together uh, to uh, make it uh, a, a functioning thing. And because uh, in some ways, I don't think they're going to pay someone to recreate something that they can just buy. Sure. Yeah. I'm impressed with it. It's It looks very, very good. Yeah. <clears throat> what I wanted to do on this, the second thing here is that this is a, a, a little chart of some data that you know, some people took for uh, looking at 
a little experiment. I, in fact, I'll, I'll just sh quickly show you the experiment here. What you do is you have a, a tube full of uh, some liquid with a dye in it, and you shine a little light through it. And depending on how concentrated the dye is, so that basically, if I move this, make the dye darker, uh, less of the light gets transmitted through. And if the dye gets, uh, uh, you know, if the dye goes away, more more of that gets transmitted. So that's sort of what what they're doing is they're they're looking at this uh, guy here, and then they have some. And what they did is they took that uh, thing and they put some bleach into it. So the bleach is reacting with the dye and taking the color out of the dye. So they've got a time versus percent transmission. And part of the law that you know it governs is, is basically it's based on the absorbance. And the absorbance is just some effectivity times the length times the concentration. So what they did is they had to change the transmission to absorbance. So you do that with a log. I've got this set up there. That basically, I just take this guy here and uh, and then do that. I can do that. I can do that. Control D fills down the data. So there's my absorbance. I can graph the absorbance. But what I really want to do is look at my concentration. So I can take the same thing here. Uh, and then fill that down. And then as he showed, what I want to do, I want to do a concentration versus time. So I can select this column, pull down my control, select that column, and then insert my chart. And that shows me my concentration versus time. And it's going down. Well, yeah, the, the die is uh, taking away the, uh, the uh, or the, the bleach is, is bleaching the die. But there's three different ways this could happen. It could happen linearly, it could happen proportionally, or it could happen proportionally squared. And we want to figure this out. So it says if it happens linearly, that should be a straight line, but it's not. So what I want to do is I want to take, I want to say equals ln of the column before, and then take that and fill down. And now I want to make another chart. I'm going to take time, pull down the control, pick log of concentration, insert, Another chart. Well, that one looks a little bit straighter, doesn't it? Yeah. The third option, I could say, well, it's one over this, but this is equals one over that value. I take that thing, pull that formula down, hold times control, hold concentration, insert chart and now I've got three charts come on now I've got three charts here but only the you know which one of those looks looks straightest concentration log or one over the log the log one looks good okay so I can select that and then I, I can say, oh, I want to add a trend line. And yeah, trend line, and there's linear line. I can click on that and like they have said, this little thing comes up so I can form it. So I can actually de display the equation and the R value on there. And then from my chemistry experiment, I can take that coefficient and say the slope here is minus the, the rate constant and the intercept up here is log of my initial concentration. And from that, I can do my chemistry uh, calculations and everything. But this is what they, they do in one of their chemistry things. But 
this is where I often are teaching them how to do charts like that. And so it's fairly simple. As Willie said, if you get it laid out in a nice table like this, it's really easy to make the charts. And then I can take these ch charts and say, oh, well, I, I, I want to make that look a little bit prettier this way. Oh, you know, my concentrations, let's say that, 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 that column here. Oh, one of the other things I wanted to show you, which is actually sort of fun, on this guy. Yeah, basically, if I click on this cell here, he's, he's got you know, its value. But instead of showing up as B2, I just renamed him stock concentration. Same for this one here. I renamed him EL. And then when I wrote my formula, I can write C6 over EL. So I can do it by the name of the cell by renaming it. You know, it's still D6, but or in this case, EL is, is still D2, but it's now got the name EL so I can refer to it by name when I'm using it in a formula. That was one of the other things I found is quite nice because it actually allows me to uh, use the names of things. So I, I'm not trying to remember, well, what does that cell refer to? Well, no, it's my stock concentration. My time zero concentration is my original stock concentration times a little dilution factor. That's how I, I got that number. And that's sort of pretty much what I had for this. And I will stop sharing at this point. David, did you do this animated? Uh... This thing here? Yeah. Oh, no, that, that that's part of the FET from the University of Colorado. They have a tremendous number of nice little simulations here, you know, where you can basically take this thing. I can make that thing, you know, if I make it wider, it's going to, uh, deeper, it's going to, uh, wow. uh, uh, you know, you cut down the transmission even more. I can change the wavelength of it. I can turn it on and off. <laughs> yeah, I have a little ruler that I can measure things with. They, 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 these are very nice things for uh, the students to sort of play with and get an idea of what's going on. Wow. And... So Willie has his virtual hand up. Yeah, yes, Willie. I, I had a comment back on your spreadsheet when you were naming naming the cells. Yeah. Okay, one advantage to that is it fix it fixes itself as if it's a, a absolute reference. That's right. Really nice when you when you're copying things down, you don't have to worry about doing the the dollar sign and all that stuff. So that, yeah. that's just an added yeah. thing. For naming it naming a cell, even though it's a simple one cell name, it fixes that. Yeah. As a constant, we were talking about it a couple of weeks ago. There's your pi yeah. constant. Yeah. Yeah. In general, uh, if I've in a formula, if I'm putting, you know, dollar row, dollar column, then I say, let me just give that cell a name. All right. All right. Uh, da David, would you repeat on how you name a column? I was going to say, if you go up to the. Okay. Let, let, let me say uh, I have pi and I want to give it the value 3.1. Four one five nine. I just select that column there, and then I come over here. Call it a name box. Yep. Yeah, and then. Uh, oh, you have to enter the pi. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Three. Yeah, had to, you had to return. And then, then I I just set pi. And now I I can say okay, uh, I want to say this thing equals pi and there it is it picks up the the value if i change this value up here 3.14 it changes down there as well thank you hank did you have a question no i uh i want to tell people something that they might find interesting and they could do that i do every week okay week I update a spreadsheet uh, with the prices of 160 exchange traded funds, ETFs. ETFs trade like stocks, but they can there, there are ETFs that represent 
everything from today's value of the S&P 500 to uh, the latest uh, price of the composite of all the defense industries in the United States. And I want to show you how that presents, which I think you Excel just can't do. Okay, uh, I will stop sharing. Would you like to share? Yes, please. Okay. I start sharing here. And this is what I'm sharing is a spreadsheet that has three years worth of Friday prices. If I go all the way over here to the left, it'll go, oh, I'm back in 2000, starts in 2019 here, mm -hmm. runs all the way to uh, the first week in 2023, namely yesterday, mm -hmm. the sixth, and here it has um, rows for each, a row for each stock with those prices. Okay. Mm -hmm. The reason that I use this program, which is Lotus 123, Lotus has gone out of business, but I still have a copy of Lotus 123 for DOS. And that came to me on the first computer I was ever given by one of our kids. And the reason I'm still using it is I want to look at any one of these. Here are the symbols for each one of these uh, uh, exchange traded funds. And let's say that I want the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The ETF that represents that is DIA. I can now go there and I'm, there's the menu. I'm going to, and you'll see here, the top menu is graph. If I now type G, then I get uh, that I can now type N for name. And now I can type use and pull up DIA. And there is the chart for DIA for three years of prices. And now, and now I can type the one for, I can just exchange, get rid of that and go graph name use uh, QQQ. There is the NASDAQ 100. And all 160 of those charts are available without reconstructing them every week, right up to date. That's why I still use this. Because if I wanted to look at 50 of these, one right after the other, I would have, in Excel, I would have to construct 50 of them and put 50 of them. I think we lost him briefly. He'll be back. I'm betting that what he wants to do could probably be done in Excel. He just doesn't know how to do it. Yeah, I would take that on as a challenge. If he wants to give it to me, I'll be glad to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> That's anyway. what I do for fun. Yeah. And Willie, what I was thinking that you, know, you can make up a table where the, the values are some you know, lookup uh, function from the, a bigger table and then just grab you know, graph what's in the lookup table, then you just have some selector that says, well, which row am I, you know, which row is my lookup table giving me in, in graphing? Yeah, there's there's all sorts of neat tricks with dynamic graphing. You can just, you could have the names or you could input the names like he said, and it could pull up the graph. It's not. Mm -hmm. Okay, it looks like Hank is back in. Okay. I am. <laughs> we can see and hear you. That's fascinating. Yeah. And while you were away, Willie and I were trying to solve your problem. Okay. Um, I'm sure Excel can do it. 
I just, uh, I like the way I am doing it. And you can still run DOS in Windows in case anyone is interested. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other questions at this time? Uh, yeah, I, I, I do. Um, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to ask is, Hank something too. Is there you, a way in you, Excel? You, you people can you learn how to use the um, hand up and then we'll right. take you in turn. Go ahead, Will. You're muted, Will. Uh, I I need a function whereby I can execute a calculation upon demand and not have it do it automatically. Is there some way to do that? Um, I I don't want this calculation to take place if I put a new number in, for instance. I don't want it to do a new calculation until I tell it to do that. Does I that think we'll sense? defer to Willie on that. Sounds like you want to turn off auto calculation. And that that's a setting in the in the options in Excel, at least. You can turn yeah. off auto calculate, and then you have to manually manually calculate by pressing F nine, I believe it is. Yeah, well, I I just wanted to do it for just one calculation, not for everything. It's just one calculation that I need to delay until I tell it to do it. Uh, it's, it's essentially when I you know, reset a chart or re, I'm sorry, not a chart, but when I reset um, a spreadsheet, there are times when I just want to reset one particular um, number on the chart. I don't want it to do everything all at the same time. I'll take a look at that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, mean, I was just looking, uh, I see three calculation options, automatic, automatic except for data tables and manual. And then there's a calculate now. Oh, okay, manual might do it. Yeah, the, the, yeah. manual just means that it, as opposed to it automatically doing it, it, you just have to, you can put in five different changes and then hit calculate. Right. So you turn off automatic and then that, that just means when you want to update your numbers, you have to manually do it. I mean, you you push a button and it automatically updates your program, all all your data, all your changes that you made, or all your calculations are all updated. You can't just update one cell and leave all the rest of the cells unchanged unless yeah. you write a macro to do that. That's a little too specific for the the question I had for Hank since I had the floor here is. Uh, how did how did you set up the chart in the first place? I mean, do you have the option in that Lotus program for whether it's a line graph or bar chart or something? Um, yeah, you can you can get a blank spreadsheet and just start filling it in. And when you have when you have the spreadsheet all filled in, um, Then you can tell the tell the program to bring up a chart of a certain area, just as you do in Excel. Okay. You tell so you had me, to find you had to define some parameters, not just. Well, yeah, you have to you have to start it. with a blank spreadsheet, just as you do in Excel, and put the data in. I I have ways to put the data in every Friday 